Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to the Battle of the Beans. In today's Battle of the Beans, we're using the Fujifilm X100V versus the Yashica Electro 35 GT. Today's Battle of the Beans is to see how similar the X100V's film simulations are to the actual film stock that it's trying to simulate. So we shot on the Provia film simulation standard on the X100V and we shot Fujifilm's Provia 100 on the Yashica Electro 35 GT. Let's take a look at these images, see how closely similar they are, and see who takes home all the beans. Alrighty, first up, let's take a look. Our first contenders are these dirty, filthy dumpsters. So remember, over here on the left, this is our X100V, shot on the standard Provia simulation with no edits after the words. These are straight out of camera. And over here, this is the Fujifilm's Provia film. This is Provia 100. What I'm noticing first is that the film has got a much higher exposure and a little bit of different color, especially here in the blues of the sky. The whites are really white, whereas here on the Fuji film, you can see that the whites in the shadows are kind of leaning towards the bluish tint a little bit. Out of straight, which one do I actually just like most? That's where the bean's gonna go. Whichever image I happen to think, you know what, that's the one I'm gonna pick out of a blind test, that's who gets the bean. So, first one's first. First bean to the film. All right, moving on, digital versus film. What have we got here? We have a nice little pool, and wow, these are very, very similar. These ones are almost identical. I'm gonna have a real difficult time trying to pick between these ones. I mean, look at the greens in the pool versus the greens in the pool on the film. These are really similar, but I do like the exposure a little bit more on the film. So you know what? The film's getting itself another bean. That's two to zero for beans. All right, the film is starting off strong. The thing that I really liked about this pool was it had excellent Wi-Fi. Look at that. You can see full bar signal strength coming right out of the water. That's really nice to see. But what I don't like about this one is I don't like that we're getting a little bit of red cast here in the pool. And I'm not sure where that's coming from. I'm not sure why these whites are starting to drift into the red spectrum, where over here on the digital version, these ones are completely nice and white. This one's going to the X100V. Two beans to one, here we go, keeping on moving on. This is the Frosty Freeze. I do really like this image, I like it a lot. The issue that I'm running into on this one is that this one's just a little bit sharper, whereas this one has just a little bit of, I don't wanna call it unsharpness, but the lens on the Yashica Electro is just a little bit softer than the X100V. But let's look at the colors. Honestly, I think these colors are almost identical, but we are still seeing that little bit of blue tint here in the shadow on the X100, whereas on the Provia film, you're not getting that bluish tint. So you know what? I'm gonna have to say, I do like, I like the film better, even though it is technically a little bit softer. I think I like the film's image a little bit more. We're going three beans on the film. All right, moving on here. Let's see, this one of an empty road. Well, close to an empty road. There's a couple cars there. You know, I think this one is going to go to the X100V. I do like the coolness of the road here, even though the film over here, you know, it's not giving you that blue cast, but I don't really like what's going on with the sky here. I like the more neutral gradient here. I'm not sure why this sky actually went so far into the yellow spectrum here. That's kind of an odd feature. You know, I'm not editing these. These are not, it's not like I pulled a linear gradient on here and then, you know, tried to warm up the sky. That's how it came to me straight out of the lab. And I always have my lab the most neutral scans as possible. So this one's going to the X100. Okay, moving on, two beans to three. This is a nice tight game. Okay, here we go. Looking through the broken window of an old car, the Frosty Freeze. You know what, at first glance, I do like this one a little bit more because I like the framing more. I think that the way that the Frosty Freeze is in the window looks a little bit better, but I don't like the color of this rust around it. I actually like the color here 
on the Provia a lot more. I think this looks a little better. It's a little bit warmer and has a little bit more saturation to it. So I'm actually gonna give that one as an overall winner to the film on this one because you know even though this one might be a better framed image and has a better you know composition to it i like the coloring of this one a lot more if you guys have learned or gotten any good information out of watching these cameras battle it for the beans then do me a favor and subscribe to this channel it really means the world to me and makes it so that i can continue making these videos all right we got ourselves some hoodoos. We went down to Goblin Valley State Park here in Utah and took a look at some weird funky rocks. Let's see how these did. I was really nervous about how these images were gonna come out on the film because it was such a hot, bright day that I was nervous that a lot of them were gonna be overexposed. And to be honest, a lot of them did get overexposed. You can see here on the Fuji film that the X100V kept the data of the sand a lot more, whereas on the film it's starting to get blown out because Provia is slide film, and so slide film has a lot less latitude when it comes to messing up your exposure. And so the reason that I shot this with the Yashica was because it's basically an automatic camera. You just choose the aperture and it chooses everything else for you. You know, your film speed's already set, obviously, but it chooses the shutter speed. Trying to compensate between these really, really bright whites and the really, really dark shadows, I think is just a little bit too much for the latitude of this slide film. And so, you know, in general, I do think I actually kind of like this one a little bit more, but it's gonna have to be defaulted over to the X100 on this one because the X100 is not blown out. All right, we are going three beans over there to the X100. This one of the entirety of Goblin Valley. This one, ooh, this one's really close. Even though we do have the sky here in the X100 and the sky in the film is actually pretty blown out, you know what? Just because I like this image more, I don't know why, but there's something about the shadows and the coloring of this one where I like the warm tones a little bit more of the film here. So that's gonna actually take the beans on that one. Moving on, we are looking at some more hoodoos. <laughs> These kind of look like little butt cheeks, you know, little, little crotch action here going on. You know, see, you can see here on the film, we're really getting blown out with these really hot sections here, whereas the X100 is actually holding those a lot better. We're not blowing out and getting a whole bunch of white lost data. This one is going to the X100. Bean for you, baby. Take that bean and suck it down tasty. All right, what are we looking at here? Some more hoodoos. Ooh, this one's really, really close. You know, there's some kind of unique color casting that I think I'm seeing in the film here. It almost looks like in the rocks, there's just a tiny little bit of blue that's getting pushed into the reds here, kind of bringing it almost to the magenta side a little bit, whereas on the X100, the digital, it looks like they're staying more true to their actual color, which was very, very red. I don't like that there's a little bit too much of exposure going on over here. It feels like it's detracting a little bit. This one, you know, I'm giving it to the X100. Digital takes the win on that one. Our next image is of some more hoodoos, and this one, oof, you know what? Unfortunately, this one's gotta go to the X100. I don't know why I should say unfortunately. I love that camera. I think it's one of the best cameras ever made. You know, unfortunately, I might be really handicapping the film on this one just because of me not being the best photographer on the planet. You know, I'm blowing out this white sand here, whereas I was actually able to keep the data of the white sand here a lot better. So this one, the X100 is taking another bean. We are having ourselves a close race. Got ourselves some more hoodoos here. This one's definitely going to the film. I think I like the film shot a lot more. Yeah, I could say that I'm just giving it to the film shot because I think I did miss focus here on the X100. But you know what, color wise, I think I like the darker gradient more here on the sky. And I think the coloring of the rocks just looks a little bit more natural. You're getting a lot more like warm red tones on it. Whereas on the X100, I feel like they're a little bit neutraled out, unfortunately. They're kind of a duller gray. Take that bean film. That bean is yours. This one, oh, this is a clear winner for the X100 on this one. This one, well, I don't know. On some hands, I do really like the style of this one. I like the bright, airy feeling of it. 
but the X100 is so much more true to life. This one is really showing very closely how that scene looked from my eye when I was taking it. Whereas on this one, the film, it's, it's really bright. It's really, it's got that kind of, you know, hey, this is kind of like a nostalgia vibe kind of thing that a lot of photographers really go for. But this one, to me personally, I don't love it. So we're gonna give another bean to the X100 on that one. This image, I do really love this image. I think this one came out great looking through this hole in the rock over here at Temple Stone over here in the background. And this one, this one's where you can see very, very different in the amount of coloring between the film and the digital. Look at the film here, you're getting a lot of yellow and I think it's kind of almost bleeding yellow from this rock around here. Whereas on the X100, the rock is still really red, but you still have a look. Oh, I got so many burps. I had too many beans. <laughs> so the sky is really blue and it's really keeping its color. Whereas it feels like the film is kind of molding into this yellow spectrum over here. So I'm going to give a bean to the X100 on this one. I really do like this image. I think it came out great. I'm really happy with the exposure. I think this one on the film is probably a little bit overexposed, but on both hands, I do like them. The framing is just better on the X100. This one, yeah, see, this is where you can really tell that slide film just does not perform very well in terms of really bright light scenarios. You know, these rocks up here are getting completely blown out. We do have good coloring here in the bushes, but it's not as good as the coloring here on the X100. The X100 is really retaining all the data here and it's keeping really nice saturation here in the bushes. That's another bean to the X100. The X100 is hungry for the beans. It really likes it. Okay, so over here, this is kind of looking through a canyon, kind of down some curvy, watery bits and you know what, it's gonna be the same story. It's kind of this idea that the slide film is just blowing out too much in the highlights. And you know, it probably is mostly my fault as the photographer, you know, I don't shoot slide film very often, but I have shot some slide film through the Yashica and it wasn't having this problem and I didn't change any of my exposure settings. I wasn't, you know, increasing it by one stop or decreasing by one stop. I was just shooting it straight at box speed in order to, you know, try and keep it as neutrally balanced as possible. But we're still blowing out quite a bit and we are shooting this in the middle of the day in the bright desert with high noon sun so it's understandable that there's not going to be as much latitude with the film to be able to retain that highlights but you know the X100 it's doing a really good job of it's got some really kick-ass dynamic range I mean see look at this this one on um, like honestly this one is probably just my own fault this one I don't know what I was thinking here I probably had my aperture ring too open and so the Yashica wasn't actually able to compensate with a high enough shutter speed in order to get the image properly exposed because the Yashica can only go up to a 1 1,000th of a second for its shutter speed. So if I have my aperture open to, you know, say F4 in the middle of bright sun, it's not gonna be able to get a fast enough shutter speed in order to actually get this image properly exposed. And so that's what I think happened here was I forgot to make sure that my aperture ring was set properly. So that one, did I give that a bean? I think I did. Let's give it another bean just to make sure. If I run out of beans, you know I'm bad at counting. Ooh, we went and saw a museum with some old dinosaurs. Ooh, this one, I really like the way that you can see here the coloring difference between the film over here on the right and the digital over here on the left. The digital is a lot cooler. It's a lot more neutrally balanced to white, whereas on the film, because we're inside, the film is really leaning hard into the yellow spectrum. And I honestly, I do like it. I actually like the film image a lot more on this one. I like the warmth of it, whereas the cool nature on the X100, eh, it just doesn't give me the same kind of, you know, saucy feelings as the film. All right, film, you get yourself a bean. How about a pink bean? Everybody loves the pink bean. So let's look at some colors. What I wanted to do while I was shooting there in the museum was I wanted to see exactly how the colors really render differently between the film and the digital. And the digital, 
it is cooler. It is definitely cooler. You can tell that you get a lot more color out of these, you know, cooler tones, the greens. Whereas here on the film version of it, the greens are a little bit more muted. It's because there's a little bit more yellow in the film itself, I believe, which makes it seem like the greens aren't, you know, they're not popping as much. I'm gonna actually give that another bean to the X100 on that one. You know, I mean, I did miss focus on that one, but that's not really why I'm giving the bean over to the digital here. I like the coloring of the digital a lot more than I like the film color. This one, you know, this one is obvious here. This one is so guaranteed a win for the film. Totally gets it. I love this image. It's incredible. It's perfectly exposed. It's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah I'm joking. That's it's 100% of being over there. I don't know what I did here. I think I actually had my hand over the light meter part on the Ashika, and so I kind of covered it up, and for whatever reason, it thought it needed less light or more light, or I'm not totally sure what happened. Honestly, it was just a goof on this one, but I do love the X100 image. I think this one came out really beautiful. I wish I had figured out how to shoot that on film, but I just ended up getting this gray splotch of nothing. It's really unfortunate. Okay, look at this dinosaur. Wow, we got ourselves a skull. This is Thalassomedon. Um, and you know what? I think this one goes to the film. I really like the coloring on this one a lot. And when I saw it there in person with my eyes, this was a lot warmer. This one is very, very close to the actual natural color of the skull while I was there. Whereas this one seems a little bit too much pushed into the, you know, cooler spectrum. You know, it's getting really good whites here in the background. Whereas these whites do lean a little bit into the yellowish but I think the coloring on the skull, I think that one looks really, really good. So we gave a bean over there for that. See this one, this is where you can really see the difference between shooting digital inside versus shooting film inside. This one's too warm for me. I love warm images, but that one's too warm. I think the digital, the X100, looks a lot better than the Provia 100 film. I mean, to each their own. Maybe you really love piss yellow images. Hey. If that's, you know, if that's your thing, I am not here to judge, but I like the, I like the cool nature of the digital on that one. You know, see this one, you can still see that the colors here are a lot more yellow on the film versus the digital. This is the name of some animal or dinosaur that lived. He's apparently the most famous dinosaur of all time and they named him Dippy. I don't know why, but anyway, so I like I like the X100 again, you know, I I don't like the oversaturation of yellow and warm tones on that one. See, this is this is one image that I really liked. I was really in, interested to see how different the coloring comes out on the film versus the digital. And so, like look at this green rock. You can tell there's more green here in the X100 versus the film because the film has so much yellow in it that it doesn't bring out the greens and the blues as much. You know, the, the blue on the X100 is also much, much bluer. Whereas over here, you know what, I'm actually quite surprised about this. I thought this yellow rock over here, this arsenic sulfide, you know, I thought this would be really, really yellow on the film, whereas it might have been doled out here on the X100, you know, but I'm actually really happy to see that the X100 retained all of that yellow data as well. You know what? I hate to say it, but you know what? The X100 is really just, really just killing it today. Let's look at some more colors. You know, I think this one actually, this one I actually do think I like the film a lot more on this one. I think the coloring looks a little bit better, looks a little bit more natural to be honest. Whereas the coloring on the X100, I think it's a little bit nuclear. It's kind of got this, wow, you know, kind of got a SpongeBobby feeling to it where everything's just a little bit too spicy for me. I think the yellowed out tones here on the film, I think those do look a lot better, a lot more natural. So I guess if you're shooting like fake underground scenes, maybe the film's a better way to go than the X100. Not totally sure. This is a pizza oven, making some dinner with the family, you know, burning some pizzas. I love that we got the smoke here on the film shot. I think that looks really, really good. Whereas, you know, it is a little bit more blown out in the highlights, the film, that's for sure. But I, you know what? I think I like the coloring of the film more. I'm gonna give that one to the film on this one. You know, the X100, it's a good image, it's fine, but it just doesn't have the pizzazz that the film shot does for some reason. 
Okay, let's look at some more colors. This is of my nieces playing on a little jungle gym that we've got in the backyard. These greens of the X100, wow, those are vibrant. They are nuclear almost. I, I don't think I like those. Those kind of hurt my eyeballs, to be honest. You know, I'm just getting straight green shot at me, whereas I like the neutraled out nature here on the film. I think that looks a lot better. So that one, the jungle gym, is getting itself a bean for the film. It's actually a pretty tight game. I'm not good at counting beans, but, you know, we're, we're close here. Ooh, this one. Oh, this is difficult. This one, this one's really difficult. I, I, I'm having a rough time deciding between these two. I, these are both really good images. On one hand, I love the proper exposure and the good focus on this one. You know, the background's not in focus, but our subject here is in focus. Whereas on the film, I accidentally got the background in focus, but I kind of love the background, you know, and I do love this big yellow sun flare that you're getting through there. I think that's beautiful. Uh, you know what? We're, ju we're just giving it, we're just doing a personal thing. I'm just gonna show, I'm just gonna say which one I like best. And you know what? Beans going over to the film. I, I like it more. I think, I think it's a more fun image, you know? Yes, the X100 is beautiful. It's fine. It's great. But the film image, it's honestly, I just like it more. I like the faces. I like the crying baby. I like the warm tones of it. I think it looks great. Ooh, this is, this is really nice to see. I really like seeing this. You can see the difference between the trucks here, between the X100 and the film. They're so similar. They're really, really close. The truck on the X100 just looks a little bit brighter, just tiny bit. Whereas the shadows of the green on the truck are just a little bit darker. And the truck itself, you can tell that the film over here is just a little bit more yellow inside of it, which makes it so those greens are just a little bit duller. You know, you could see it in the image of the grass, you know, that the grass on the X100 was super bright and saturated, whereas the grass on the film was a little bit more doled out and neutral. But on this one, whereas we're trying to see the nice colors of the green truck, I like that for the X100. I think that one looks really, really good. Moving on, and we have some lonely bikes that got stolen and probably just thrown away. Um, this one, ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. you know, we've got some darker browns over here on the film, whereas the browns over here on the digital are nice and bright. This one's, this one's really difficult. This one's a tie. I think I, I honestly can't decide. But I, this one's, this one's more it's thicker. I don't know how uh, I don't know how colors can be thicker, but for some reason, the brown seems to be thicker on the film shot here. So I'm gonna give that one to the film. What is this? This is a cathedral. That's what we're looking at here. Okay, so in this cathedral, this one's definitely gonna go to the film. And here's my reason why. Looking here on this bright side of the cathedral where the sun is hitting it, it's a lot more neutrally balanced over here on the X100V but looking at the cathedral here on the film, it gives this really nice, almost glowy, ambient yellow warmth to it. And you know, it's a really, really kind of pinkish, reddish chapel. And so I really like that the film shows that really well here. And you know, this one's actually properly exposed. I don't have the sky blown out, thankfully. And so I, that one, I like the colors on that one a lot more. Ooh, this red door, I really loved this red door. This is pretty wild to see. This is, I was not expecting. Look at the color differences between the X100 and the film, you know? And it might be that the film was underexposed just a tiny, tiny bit. So you're not getting this bright kind of, you know, highlight peeking through the red door, but it's so, so red. That is blood red. I really, really like it. You know, there is more data and more detail here on the digital, the X100V but I really like the way that this red complements the kind of dark yellowish brown of the wood. I think that's really beautiful. So that one's going to the film as well. This is a tight game, you guys. We are, this is close. I was not expecting this. Whoa, this one, this one is really confusing me. This one I'm not totally sure as to why. You know, the X100 is definitely more true to life. There wasn't that much color 
in this drippy nastiness coming out of this old you know water pipe or something it was much closer to the x100 where it was a duller kind of muted brown but i love the way that the film came out i mean look at this nice beautiful purplish yeah we did blow off the sky just a little bit but i i love that one more i don't know why it looks the way it does because again i'm not editing these in post but hey Take a bean when you get a bean. Anybody offers you a bean and you say no to that bean, there's a problem with you. You gotta always take the bean. Okay, let's look at some more colors. Wow, these are so similar. I think these ones are a tie, other than I do like the framing more on the X100, just coming in a little bit tighter. But you know, you could always crop in and post on the film if you wanted to. But I do really like that. What? <laughs> this one's difficult. All right, I gotta give it to the X100 because technically I do like the image more, even though I think it's really nice to see how completely similar the greens can be. They are just a micro bit more saturated on the X100 here, whereas on the film, they have just a little bit dull, just, just barely. This one's fun, I like this. This is nice to look at coloring. And so like you can see so drastically how different the greens are. Look how, look how much more teal these greens are on the X100 versus look how much darker and more true to green they are on the film. You know, I think, I think actually, to be honest, I'm gonna give this bean to the film on this one. I like the coloring more. I think this one's a little bit too cartoonish, a little bit too vibrant, whereas I think this one is actually way more true to life of what I was seeing with my eye as I actually saw it out there. I, I like that one. Okay, now the Chris Angel tree. This one's, this one's pretty wild. Let's see who takes the last winner on this one. We had this tree just pulling a full-on Chris Angel floating his way into the air. And wow, these are similar. They're really close. I like them a lot. I think they look really good. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Let's see. Let's see how we're doing. What's our score? 18. 18. All right. We're making it a tie completely. 18 to 18. Yeah. Sure, I like that one more. We're gonna, I like the flaring of the sky. That's my reasoning behind it, but it's nice to see how similar these really are. That's our bean battle. If you guys have learned or gotten any good information out of watching these cameras battle it for the beans, then do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. It really means the world to me and makes it so that I can continue making these videos. Thank you for joining us for the battle of the beans. And if you liked this video, take a look at either this one or this one where I go into more detail about shooting with the Yashica Electro 35 GT. This one over here is when I first got the camera and you know just kind of opening it up and trying to see how everything works with it. And this one is after I had shot with the camera for a little bit and actually had a little bit more knowledge of the camera. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the Kevy Chronicles. Can't wait to see you next time.